This is a candy melt molding demo video where I'm going to show you how I made this chocolate house. Now these particular molds for this particular house were in a kit. Max received a Christmas present several years ago where you could put chocolate in these molds and make a house with it. And I just kept the molds after we were done with the house. Now I looked to try to find this particular kit online and I was unable to find it. I don't think they make it anymore. It was made by Rose Arts. Now I have found similar ones online, so I will put a link in the description box to those websites if you're interested, if you want to try to find these molds to make them yourself. These are just plain plastic molds and to fill them, you'll need some candy melts. I will put all sorts of information about what candy melts are in the description box. I melt mine at 50% power in the microwave. I put all the different colors in little Ziploc bags. And what I do to keep them melted, is I put them in a double boiler over some very hot water right in the bags and it keeps them from solidifying while you're fiddling around with all the different colors. Now you need to start off with the little details first and I'm just going to continue on filling up all the little details using all the different colors. It's probably best if you can do all of one color at one time. And in between filling up the little cavities in the mold, give the mold a gentle tap. And what that'll do is it will release any air bubbles that might be trapped inside and will fill up all the little spaces in the mold. And of course, the colors you choose for your little candy house are completely up to you. Uh, this one contained a one end piece to one side piece or a wall piece and one roof section. So you have to fill these molds twice to get a completed house. And I just used pretty much all the colors that I had on hand uh, of candy melts. My candy melts are Merkins brand and I buy them at my local bulk food store which is called The Bulk Barn and that's all over in Canada. Are uh, they also available at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and if Hobby Craft if you're in the UK and even online at the Merkins and the Wilton website. This entire mold will be covered over with chocolate after we're done. So I'm just going to do the small details first, then these will go onto a cookie sheet and we'll go right into the refrigerator for a little while until they solidify. It doesn't take that long. I'd say about an hour and all those little details will be all, ni all nicely chilled. Now, once they're nicely chilled, you can put the main chocolate layer. And what I do is I fill in the mold and then I give it a tap to spread it out. And if there's any pieces that are missing, I just add a little bit more chocolate, a little at a time until the mold is completely filled. You can see those air bubbles coming to the surface after I give the mold some little taps. And the same thing with the side pieces. I'm going to cover it over with chocolate. And one piece of advice I'll give you is make sure you have enough melted chocolate on hand when you're making this. This, this particular end piece, when I was filling it, I realized that I wasn't going to have enough. So I squeezed out as much as I could out of the bag that I had. I gave it a shake and there were still some pieces that need to be filled. While I was melting the, the last bunch of chocolate, the mold had started to solidify. So you can see that the back of it, it looks going to look a little messy, but that's going to be on the inside of the house. So you're not going to see it. Unmolding is very easy. If it's chilled properly, it should just almost fall out of the mold on its own. Very easy. Also, if it's chilled properly, it should have a nice shiny surface to it. And half the fun is unmolding this to see the little surprise of what it looks like when it's completely done. So I'm unmolding the roof piece and then there'll be an end piece. Now, if you find that there's any places where there's excess chocolate, you can most certainly just take a sharp knife and then just clean up some of the details, but wear a pair of clean cotton gloves, or in this case, I'm just holding it with a paper towel because the heat of your fingers will melt into the chocolate and you'll leave fingerprints, which is not very attractive if you're going to give this to somebody as a gift. So I'm just detailing the heart and the door and to prepare the molds for the next batch, I just wipe them clean with a paper towel just to get rid of any excess chocolate.
Now for assembly. A little bit more of the chocolate on the edges of that piece and then I just prop it up with a soup can. Add the side pieces also propped up with soup cans. You're just going to prop them until the chocolate sets and that actually happens very quickly so it's not really not all that difficult and it doesn't take that much time either. And this is the same process I would use with a gingerbread house as well. So you just put on a little bit of chocolate. I'm doing this on a silicone mat as well or you could do it on wax paper so if any of that chocolate drips down um, then it'll be easily removed afterwards. And for the roof peaks, more chocolate along the edge and then you just attach the roof. Now the roof is a little bit more challenging because it is quite heavy and you kind of need to hold it until the chocolate sets and I'm using a paper towel to try to avoid fingerprints. And then your chocolate house is pretty much done. Um, I did add some details. I found that there was a gap at the peak of the roof so I added more chocolate. And what I did is I just let it drip down a little bit so it looked like there was a lot of snow on the, the top of the roof. And I also filled in any very large gaps uh, along the edge of the roof with a little bit more chocolate. Now to give this to somebody, what I did was I took a piece of cardboard, I wrapped it with some decorative green foil, and then I put it in this um, gift basket wrap. These are designed to go to put a gift basket in, but it works quite well for this kind of thing because you can still see the house through the plastic and it adds a nice little touch. It protects it as well until you're ready to give it to somebody. And it comes with a great little twist tie that's color coordinated. This is probably going to go to my niece or my nephew at Christmas time. It's a lot of fun to make. And if you can find similar chocolate molds where you live, you should give them a try.